Hello, everyone. Welcome to Brave and Stars Witching Hour. I'm your host and head witch, Miss Alaris Blue Ribbon at the helm this evening. I want to give a shout out to everybody at Revolution Radio, staff producers, listeners, chat room, and thank everybody for tuning in tonight. And we are 100% listener supported, so if you like what you're hearing, please click on the donate button. We appreciate your support and thank you for any contribution you can make to this excellent station. And you are listening to Studio A. And my special guest this evening is Niara Tarila Isley, and I probably butchered that middle name, but we'll correct it. Um, Niara was an expert presenter at the Mind Control Summit in Vegas a few weeks back, and she did a fabulous job, and I'm very happy to have her on board this evening. And let me read you her bio. Niara Tarella Isley has been a spiritual seeker from the cradle of, having discovered a disturbing three-month block of missing time from 1980 during her tour of duty in the U.S. Air Force. Niara underwent hypnosis to investigate this and other memories and strange dreams from childhood. What she discovered turned her life inside out for many years, launching her into in-depth study and research to find out what had happened to her, why, and in what political and social context, also suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder which is PTSD herself, she had to find ways to heal from the emotional fallout. That healing journey had been an awakening to the multidimensional universe we all live in, a lifelong learner across a broad spectrum of disciplines, including various sciences, personal growth, and spiritual practice. Niara's healing process opened her up to amazing insights about the world we live in, in our space, and our place, and relationship to the larger universe around us. Niara has a BA in social work and has worked in the helping professions for Many years. In 2013, Yara completed a book about her experiences, healing, and insights called Facing the Shadow, Embracing the Light, A Journey of Spirit Retrieval and Awakening. Today, she is an independent body-centered therapist, a writer, educator, and an artist. She is also certified in Dolores Cannon's Quantum Healing Hypnosis Therapy and working on additional certifications in EFT, Emotional Freedom Technique, and TRE, trauma-releasing exercises developed by Dr. David Bertelli to better help others heal who have been experienced trauma and PTSD. And Niara is also a member of the Exopolitics Institute Advisory Board. It's a busy woman. And her websites are www.facingtheshadowembracingthelight.com and www.enterswithhealing.com. Okay, I think I said that right. Okay, all right. Ready to roll here. <laughs> <laughs> and please welcome Niara to the show this evening. Niara, how you doing? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. And tell me again how you pronounce your middle name, so I didn't want to butcher that. Um, uh, Niara Trela Isley. Perfect. Okay, thank you. Yeah, welcome. It's so so nice to have you on board with us tonight. So thanks for joining us. And I know you had a long journey. You've been very busy. You just got back from uh, from out there in Nevada, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So um, anyways, I'd like to talk a little bit about what you've been up to and also um, kind of give everybody a recap insofar as what you talked about briefly at the Mind Control Summit. Okay. That would be good. Yeah. Um, did you want me to? Okay. Yeah, I would. Um, I talked about um, the name of my presentation was Who's Really in Charge? And I went into all the different things that kind of tend to look like they're in charge on the planet. But I really believe that it's we, the people, who are in charge. Because um, down through the years, as I have done my research and watched our society, you know, march towards more and more insane behavior, <laughs> um, I have just, you know, been really uh, watching this uh, more and more extreme kinds of things come in and uh, more maniacal behavior from people on TV and I just thought, you know, what's really behind all this? And then also I was watching, um, you know, food and water additives. You know, I'm, I, I believe in eating organic and, uh, and knowing what's in my food. And this uh, whole GMO business really bothers me. Mm. In pharmaceuticals, chemtrails, I mean, the more you look at all of it, the more it seems to be targeting, uh, targeting the human body and targeting our health. And it really seems to really hit us in the brain and in specific the pineal gland, which is our gland of enlightenment. Mm -hmm. It's the point where the soul and the body touch. And so I started thinking, why, why, why would they be targeting the, the part of us that is supposed to help awaken our consciousness? You know, and why are they serving up so much stuff, uh, so much fear based stuff in the news and I know also from Gray Braden's work that our DNA uh, cannot turn on, all the extra DNA that we have cannot turn on in the presence of fear because the DNA winds up really tight. So I was looking at all this stuff and it seems like they're really just pouring it on with anything and everything that they can do to our health, to our emotions, 
and everything to try to keep humanity from awakening, awakening. Mm -hmm. And they also keep us fighting each other. You know, that it's us versus them in a thousand different ways that they invent. And then they get people on either side fighting. And they know if we ever get together and we ever awaken our consciousness, it is game over for them. So my presentation really, uh, the punchline at the end is that is who is really in charge is us. We, the people, are in charge, the people of this planet. Mm -hmm. And the reason that we're not manifesting being in charge is because our consciousness has been indoctrinated to a system of beliefs that keep the, uh, the power mongers on top on this planet and keep the humanity subject to them. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what I'm thinking about all that. Oh, absolutely. It was, a, it was an excellent presentation, by the way. And yeah, I totally resonate with that completely. And it is about exactly what you're talking about, for sure. And, and getting back a little bit to, to your military background, I, I know you have, um, it seems to me like you have a real vast experience in so many different levels or, or on so many different levels with the military. Um, my lab experience, I guess you could call it. But can you elaborate a little bit on when you actually discovered that you had these these hidden memories? Uh, yeah, well, um, I discovered that I had missing time in uh, 1993, 94, and uh, a friend of mine was talking to me and asked me to talk, tell him about my military time, and so I told him about it, and I kind of went through it chronologically, and when I got to my first duty station at Nellis Air Force Base in Nevada, um, I stopped talking because I couldn't remember anything about working at Tonopah, yet I knew that I worked there for three months or more. And so I got, you know, that was very scary. I remember just feeling uh, nausea mm. at the fact that I couldn't remember and just feeling just incredible fear that I couldn't remember. And then I had hypnosis um, not too much later, uh, maybe within the year, or just outside of a year with Bud Hopkins. And uh, that's when some of this uh, my lab material came tumbling out. And my life has never been the same since. Mm -hmm. And I really, I should kind of uh, go back in a, in a little prequel event to this was back when I got out of the military around age 33, um, I was having severe anxiety and, uh, you know, it was kind of free floating anxiety. I didn't have anything to attach it to. I was irritable and angry. Um, I just, I was having all the symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder, but I didn't really know what that was back then. And it was just, it was just intolerable living that way. I felt like I was a mess and I was making my family's life miserable. And I nearly committed suicide at age 33. Mm -hmm. And I'm certain now, I'm certain that it was because of the things that were happening under the surface that I had not yet remembered. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I get that too. And what exactly did you do in the military when you were remembering? I was a surface-to-air missile and anti-aircraft artillery uh, radar operator. Okay. Yeah, so that would explain a lot, too. And and you do have memory and recall of certain activities that you did do. And then, of course, the other things that were those screen memories came tumbling out later on. And I don't know if you want to cover any of the um, the, the memories that you've had off-world or if you feel guided to, um, you know, you're welcome to share that with us as well. But I, I find it very, very um, compelling that there's so much data that you have stored in your in your real memories that were kind of covered up uh-huh yeah well um a lot of it came from hypnosis but then you know other things have kind of surfaced um the things that i remember pretty much spontaneously without hypnosis are memories of uh being a lyran uh or lyrian some people say lyrian or lyran um anyway i was uh, a lyran extraterrestrial uh, before come before ever coming to Earth, uh, eons ago, and those memories have just been surfacing spontaneously throughout my life, beginning at age uh, seventeen or eighteen. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's pretty powerful. And, you know, a lot of us um, well, we have the cellular memory, so once it gets activated, you know, it's it's very easy to access some of that that information without mm -hmm. a doubt. And it seems to me now, do you how did you get involved in even joining the military? I mean, did you come from a military family at all, or? Well, yeah, my okay. uh, my paternal grandfather served in World War One, and my dad served in World War Two, 
And my dad brought me up to be a patriot, and he felt like we lived in the greatest country in the world. And, of course, you know, back in the 50s and 60s, a lot of people felt that way. Mm -hmm. And um, so um, I just kind of felt like I was kind of following in my father's footsteps because I was kind of a tomboy. And um, my brothers, they just were not interested in the military at all. So for some reason, um, as much of a pacifist as I am, um, I went ahead and went into the military. And part of it was because I wanted to learn a trade. Um, I wasn't really crazy about the idea of college at the time. So I wanted to learn a trade, and I, want, I was hoping to learn electronics. But unfortunately, I really uh, kind of got cheated out of an electronics uh, job or career because um, when you're a woman in the military, um, you kind of take a back seat to the guys. The guys got all the training, and, and you get to clean out the brake trailer and make coffee. Mm. <laughs> Bummer. Yeah. I, did, I did learn to operate the radar, though. Excellent. Well, yeah. Do you think it's changed a little bit since you've been in or no? When it comes um, to women? It's changed somewhat. I'm sure that women are getting better training, but um, the, the downside is, is there's more sexual assault going on in the military at every level, you know, than uh, it's just, it's really horrible. Mm -hmm. I watched a movie called The Invisible War uh, on Netflix and it was just, you know, and this, I mean, this is stuff that's happening that's not covert ops, that's not MK Ultra, and everything else like that. This is just happening in general. Mm -hmm. And then when it happens in these in these programs with MK Ultra, Monarch, and and the mind control programs, then it's, it gets even more ugly and more horrific. Mm -hmm. It certainly does. And and how much of the mind control now that we're talking about mind control? How much of mind control do you think is actually being deployed in the military through perhaps psychotronics or even even screen memories like what you observed? And witnessed. Well, I think a lot of it goes on. Um, even even my son uh, mentioned something about uh, something that he was put through, where he was put in a room and uh, a phrase was repeated over and over and over again for several hours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's pretty pretty interesting, right there. And of course, I'm sure that you know, even when you do leave the military, you're still tracked to some degree, I would suspect. So, so how was your life after you exited from the military and, and what did you do to help restore yourself from the trauma that you endured? Mm -hmm. Well, um, life since I left the military has been, uh, I had this, you know, the near suicide, you know, it came so close, you know, um, the thing that stopped me is I know that I'm not my body. And, uh, so I knew that I would be somewhere just not in my body anymore. Mm -hmm. And so I decided I better stick around and work things through. So, but, um, yeah, after I got out of the military, one of the other things that happened was I had to go to a doctor because I was having really severe heart palpitations. And uh, I believe that was because I was working a government contract job around a bunch of ex-military guys, and it probably felt really threatening to me mm -hmm. to be a woman in a male-dominated job again. Um, but I was having the heart palpitations and it was really a nasty uh, situation where the, the heart would take off in a mad gallop and I would feel like somebody was choking me at the same time. Wow. That's and then uh, later on, I had a flashback memory that told me what that was about. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was um, the flashback happened. Uh, I was having a massage and this person put their hands on my on my neck and just were taking deep breaths before they got started. But the hands were really close to my to my throat. Mm -hmm. And I, I halfway came up off the table and I had this flashback of this blonde security guard. Um, he would slowly choke me until I lost consciousness, then revive me and let it happen again. Jeez. And of course, every time it happened, I was terrified that I was going to die. Mm -hmm. That's almost, and that, wow. Yeah. Well, that, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, that was going to say that was the origin of, of those heart spells I was having. Yeah, it sounds like it also. I was thinking about something um, deployed to screw with your, your vitals, too, like a remote type of tactical hardware. But it also reminds me of waterboarding, another version of waterboarding without the water, of course, and doing something yeah. else where you're, you know, trying to simulate a death experience and bringing them back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
That's so uh-huh. good. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me at all. And I, and I don't know if you really want to go into some of the stuff you had, experiences with the moon and things like that. It's entirely up to you if you want to elaborate on any of those off-world memories. If they if you feel guided to talk about those, that's fine. But I, I find that um, you, you do, you're very anchored and grounded considering where you've been. And that's that's a good sign right there. So it sounds like you've yeah. worked through a lot of your issues. Yeah, a lot of them. And, uh, you know, I'm on a, I'm, I'm in a support group right now for people that have had MK Ultra experiences. And I have to say that even as much healing as I have, it is really nice having this support group. And then when I listen to people talk and share, then I can share from my own experiences and I'm learning more new stuff all the time. Mm -hmm. And and it's, it's like little pieces of me that were waiting for the company of other compassionate women are being healed now. (laughs) That's big. That's really, really big. And I agree. There's just not that much. Well, I haven't seen very many support groups here um, for MK ultra or mind control in any form of design. So if you can locate a group, I think that's, that's excellent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Without a doubt. And I'm sure some of these people are probably abductees and contactees in my labs. I would suspect all forms of MK ultra. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And do you have implants or no? Have you ever been measured for implants? Um, I haven't ever been measured for implants, but I strongly suspect that I have them. Mm-hmm. I woke up with um, I woke up with a, a pain behind my right ear when I was nine years old, and when I feel when I felt there, there was this big bump behind my right ear that hadn't been there before. And then I had a a, a strange memory come come into me later on in the same day. That 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 had already al- always been there. That it was part of the natural bone of mm-hmm. my head, and so I forgot all about it. And then when I saw fire in the sky, there was a an a, the face of an owl kind of flashed on the screen. I think it was a stuffed owl in the bar or diner they were in. And as soon as I saw that owl, the mem- the real memory of the pain and and the bump, remembering the bump, um, came b- rushing back. And it was really weird that I kind of shifted gears on that because when I first had the pain and felt the bump, I was afraid I was dying of cancer. Mm-hmm. And then I just forgot about it. You know, how how strange is that? You're being from going being afraid you're going to die to uh, just forgetting all about it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Did you ever have any experiences with um, observing extraterrestrials or did you ever get a visual of any type of an off world species? Yes, I did. When I was having my experiences, uh, out on the Nevada test site, uh, I believe Area 51. Um, not sure because we went in a bus with painted over windows. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I did see uh, an extraterrestrial on the base. It was a gray. And if uh, if other research um, information is correct, that was probably one of the grays, like a J-Rod that was mentioned by Bill Uhouse. Mm-hmm. who was kind of a consultant on the ET technology that uh, the government was back engineering. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me. Now, was that real time, like physically, or was that in um, remote perspective? I mean, when you were traveling in the van? Um, actually, I didn't see the ET traveling in the, the van. Actually, it was a bus and not a van. Okay. And I was, um, and we traveled to some place, and I was injected. I was taken underground. And I was sexually assaulted, and that's and the gray was there when I was being sexually assaulted with several other people that that watched that event. Mm. I'm sure that all those people were made to watch that um, to make the situation much worse for me. Mm-hmm. So you know, not only am I being sexually assaulted, but there's like this audience. Uh, that's just annoying. It's just. Uh, believe me, don't get me started with all that. But yeah, that's yeah. infuriating to some degree. And uh, there should be accountability when you think about a lot of this stuff that's been going on, you know, whether it's through um, mind control induction or psychotronic warfare. And what I found out, um, Niara, is that there is no accountability, that these people are getting away with a lot of horrific um, types of inductions and are not being held accountable. Right. That's correct. Yeah. And that's just, uh, you know, to me, it's inexcusable. And this is one of the reasons I'm really, really happy to have you on tonight. And of course, I have a lot of respect for who you are, what you are and and where you've been. And um, I hope people pay attention this evening. I mean, this is such a this type of technology and what what happens with my labs and what happens with the mind control is just horrific. I can't even begin to tell you guys. And uh, I really appreciate you being here. That's all I can tell you. But, you know, yeah, Um, with, with the my labs and the mind control, if somebody doesn't understand what that is, how would they, what are the giveaways that they might be inducted or they might have been inducted, would you say? Well, 
um, I guess, uh, free floating anxiety about things, uh, strange dreams that are kind of disturbing, and some of them can be very vivid. Uh, waking up with strange marks on your body. Um, and, you know, in order to not be too crazy making, you know, you can't just jump to conclusions. You have to kind of be watching yourself. If you feel like there's a cause for concern, then start keeping track of your sleeping at night, any dreams that you're having, uh, any strange marks that you know were not on your body when you went to bed. Um, those kinds of things are the things to watch for. Mm -hmm. That's really important, too. And I, I have a sense that there are a lot of people out there who are getting targeted or tagged in some, some fashion. So that's really yeah. important that they keep a log. I agree with you on that one, too. And have you, you obviously have done some sessions and have worked with my lab abductees, or are you doing sessions with people like that? Yes. Um, I've just, you know, really started, uh, since my book was published, I've started um, working with people more. Okay. How's that going? I mean, are they getting breakthroughs? Are they having breakthroughs? Or Yes. Okay. Yes, they are. Excellent. And whether, and sometimes it's not, you know, I mean, I work with all kinds of people. So sometimes it's uh, my lab or MK Ultra material, and sometimes it's, it's extraterrestrial material. Mm -hmm. well, that's mm -hmm. excellent. And it's so good that you're there as a support system for them once again, because people need oh, yeah. this. I mean, my goodness, you know, what happens is they get inducted, targeted, programmed, and then just kind of left for or whatever, you know, just thrown to the wolves. And, and thank goodness that there are, are people connecting in and now helping each other through this process of, of being brainwashed and getting deprogrammed to some degree. Right. One of the worst things that can happen in, in these situations is they, they really try to isolate you. Because once they isolate you, then they can really do this thing where, where it's kind of like gaslighting. Are you familiar with that mm -hmm. term? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So gaslighting is, you know where you try to alter someone's reality and then make them feel like they're, they're losing it, mm -hmm. but they're not really losing it. Their, their reality is being altered in some way by external forces. Exactly. So, um, that's, that's one of the strategies mm -hmm. yeah. and it's, it happens in isolation and, uh, isolation is really, uh, it's a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you feel like something is going on, you need to try to reach out to someone that you feel you can trust and get some support. Mm -hmm. I so agree with that. Yeah, they did that to me in 2004. It was all about being isolated and removed from my, my quote-unquote husband at the time. So, yeah, it's exactly what they do to brainwash. You know, they want you isolated so they can break you down and program you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's no good. But, um, you know, once again, you know, we have uh, you know, all these paper trails that go to different departments and agencies and undergrounds and, you know, whether it's military or CIA, you know, it seems to me like, I, I really am pushing for accountability at this point in the continuum, and I hope other people will start backing that up because it's really inexcusable. I've seen, and I've actually counseled a lot of people too in the past, and they've come to me, and I'm telling you point blank, we've had a lot of people targeted to some degree, whether it's targeted individuals, mind control, my labs, you name it. I mean, it's almost like a, it's an epidemic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just insane. So, and I would like you to talk a little bit about your books, and I know they're available on Amazon.com, right? Yeah, I just have the one book. It's okay. uh, my first one, but it's a doozy. It's like 530 pages. Nice. And people said I should have made it into two books, but I didn't want to do that because I talked about my experiences in healing, and it just felt like a cheat to, to, to drag people through those experiences and then not give them the good part and the fulfillment of those experiences. So it's, it's a long book. It's like getting two books in one. Excellent. Anyway, the title is um, Facing the Shadow. Embracing the Light, A Journey of Spirit Retrieval and Awakening. And I didn't put mind control or UFO or ET or anything in the title because I'm hoping to reach out to a new audience mm -hmm. as well as the people that really know about this kind of stuff. I agree. And also you're addressing trauma in general, which is, you know, it can cover so many different things. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm, I'm really happy that you're doing that. And, and what are some of the techniques you used to kind of restore and remove some of the trauma? If you can just kind of give us an example or two. Well, for me, um, body centered therapy has been really uh, profound. Uh, those uh, somatic experiencing therapy was one of the ones that I uh, worked with someone here in Durango. And um, it was basically talking about the experiences and then tracking the body sensations that you feel in your body uh, as you're talking. And so then you tell kind of uh, what I call the microscopic truth about the sensations. It's like, okay, I feel tingling 
right in the center of my chest. That would be an example. Mm -hmm. So I feel this tingling. And as I focus on it, it's kind of moving up into my neck and shoulders. And it feels a little bit like a burning. And you just keep talking about the experiences and then tracking the body sensations as they move through you. And in in just acknowledging them, it's almost like they, that's what they want. They just want to be acknowledged, and then they kind of tip their hat and leave. Mm-hmm. That makes a lot of sense, too. It's almost yeah. like you're you're clearing yourself out at the cellular level, I would suspect, because that's where a lot of the trauma would be stored. Right. And then you want to drink a lot of water after work like that, too, because actual physical toxins Mm -hmm. that are created by emotions are released from the muscles. Oh, absolutely. And and do you do light therapy as well? Uh, Light therapy? I haven't done that, no. Okay. I was just curious. I know um, I work with some people who do like photon sound beams and things like that, which have been very productive. So just just another heads up. And there's so many different avenues to do this. I think the biggest problem that I've noticed is that when you're merged like with artificial intelligence or you have a real you know deep-seated interconnection it's very hard to separate the um the the separate um programming you know because it's like two different brains in one so that's that's something i've noticed now i don't know if you have that to that extent did you receive any type of telepathic communication when you were being um, inducted into these programs um some telepathic communication uh came from that gray that was in the room when i was being assaulted Mm mm-hmm that was real telepathy. It wasn't fake telepathy. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. And to, my, to my knowledge, I have not experienced the, uh, the, the synthetic telepathy. That's good. Yeah, you're lucky. But so, I do have real telepathy with my star family mm-hmm. and, and on a fairly frequent basis. That's great. Yeah. No, the, the real telepathy is great. The uh, artificial stuff, no. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Not a doubt there. So, so what do you think is a solution to the mass abductions being done, which obviously are done to traumatize and program a target or a test pilot, test subject? Yeah. What do you see as a solution for us? Well, the first thing that we need to do is we need to, uh, as, an, as an activist, we would need to create a, a movement of people like ourselves. And we would have to really start p- putting political pressure on the government, uh, in, and it would have to be extreme pressure under this encroaching fascism that we're under right now. Mm -hmm. But um, we would have to put really extreme pressure on the government to abolish the National Security Act of 1947, because that that act, which was signed into law by Truman two months after the Roswell crash, okay, that act has been responsible for creating all the alphabet agencies like the FBI, CIA, NSA, and more of them. Mm -hmm. And... They hide behind that National Security Act of 1947. So we have to abolish the the National Security Act of 1947. And once that's abolished, then we need to institute programs where our government is once again accountable to the people. Mm -hmm. And then we would have to have, um, you know, kind of a tribunal set up where people could come and bring their story, both written form, and then they would sit and give testimony about the things that they had been through and uh, just kind of have this tribunal uh, get pull records out that hopefully would be uh, forthcoming or accessible once the National Security Act of 47 is abolished. Um, So we would have to get the documentation. We would have all the people telling their stories, and then we'd, we'd have to present that to um, a a court and hopefully a a better, more fair court than the ones we have now. And just, you know, and then then that court case would have to be decided. And if there are reparations that could be made, you know, financially, I mean, nothing can give you back lost years of your life, Mm -hmm. nothing. But, you know, people could get help. They could get uh, some financial uh, re- recompense and uh, there are all kinds of things that could be done to help them if if we could uh, take back our government. Mm-hmm. I agree with you on that one and I think that's an awesome suggestion by the way. I think that's what we need to set in motion and of course it's all about getting this stuff um, organized and, and rolling in the right direction and you know it's interesting when I look at all these different alphabet agencies and I, I'm almost 100% certain that these guys are compromised also to some degree with mind control. So you're dealing with people who are irrational to begin with who are hired into these agencies that are compromised and, and really I mean I don't even think they remember what they do from day to day. I don't know what your take is on them at all. Yeah I think you, I think you pretty much nailed it. Mm-hmm. I think it's like layers and layers and layers 
of yeah. mind controlled individuals. I even think that a lot of handlers, you know, the people we love to hate, <laughs> mm-hmm. I think a lot of them are mind controlled. Oh yeah, absolutely. They I are. A lot of them don't even know they're a handler. Mm-hmm. Yep. I agree with you on that one. There's so many different programs running simultaneously. And, you know, and people have programming since they're children. I mean, we all have different kinds of programs, but then there's the mind control stuff, the, the stuff that's really initiated and, and the perpetual um, brainwashing tactics that they use to, to compromise someone, which is so wrong. But yeah, my, my take is that, yeah, they're all functioning psychotics. So you can't rationalize, you know, you can't, they're not rational. So how do you, how do you deal with them? Yeah. Right. So, but, we, you know, it's, it's not a perfect system because, you know, I, I thank God for chaos theory mathematics because <laughs> <laughs> it's not a perfect system because if it was perfect, we would not have a mind control summit like we both just attended You're and right. we would all this whistleblower stuff coming out. If they had it down perfect and it was a perfect system and it was foolproof, then there wouldn't be all these leaks. I agree with you. And do you think they're wanting wanting the leaks or no? I think some factions in government are wanting the leaks. Mm-hmm. And I and, and here's here's kind of an interesting twist on uh, some information. When Gary McKinnon, they were trying to extradite him from the UK to come over to to stand trial in the US. Um, I had a feeling at that time that it was actually good guys in our government that were trying f- to get that extradition. Because then if they could force that into a public trial and it had to do with UFOs and a space based naval fleet and a list of non-terrestrial officers, which was some of the information he got out of the naval database, um, that would that would have blast that would have been a huge step forward for disclosure Mm -hmm. if they they had brought him over and had a public trial. Mm hmm. Yeah, you're right on that one. So maybe they are setting the stage for that in a more discreet fashion. You know, I would I would think that there's some um, I don't want to say they have a conscience. I seriously doubt that, but I do think there's conflict within their own their own psychological makeup. And I think that that's what's bleeding through. And sometimes I think it bleeds through to the people they program. You know, for those of us who have a conscience and we care, um, we're obviously not programmable. At least I wasn't. So and I can pretty much say that you're you strike me as somebody who's very very headstrong. So yeah. Thank goodness, right? And I, like I said, I wished everybody had been at the uh, Mind Control Summit. I'm telling you, it was an incredible summit, and I'm proud to be a participant and expert presenter there. And, and with Niara and many others, we, um, we presented a lot of information, and, and I think that that's a ripple effect. Mm-hmm. I know? think so, too. It's really just uh, just starting to move move the energy in the right direction because, you know, these, these smoke screens that they're putting up across the globe, it's just it's got to stop. It's got to stop. Too many people are, are losing their lives and their families and their futures. Yeah. Well, I think you really hit it because I think there are layers within layers within layers. And the types of individuals that are responsible for this kind of abuse, um, I mean, really, they're moral midgets. Mm-hmm. And uh, when they when they do this kind of thing, there there have to be internal power struggles. And that creates factions within factions and opposing factions where they, they probably have their own little cold wars going on between the Washington, you know, Washington, D.C. and the White House and the Pentagon and, you know, all this jockeying for position. Mm-hmm. Because let's face it, you know, if somebody is narcissistic, it's all about me, 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 me. I want to be on top. Mm-hmm. I want to be I want to be the one, you know, and if all these people are like that and they're competing with each other, then it has to be a nasty mess on that in, on the inside. Mm hmm. Yeah, I always figure that, you know, I know they eat their own and they'll probably take each other out like, you know, like madmen. They'll just kind of keep competing and competing until they eventually self-destruct <laughs> each other. But but everybody's getting taken along for the ride. And that's the problem I have is that there are innocent, involved beings here that are, you know, that don't deserve to be dragged through this crap. So Right. Mm-hmm. That's part of it. But, you know, um, so who do you think the puppet masters are from your perspective? The puppet masters. Um, well... I think you have layers, you know, you have the people and then just above the people are, is government, you know, at this, at this, at the local levels, the state levels and the federal levels, national levels. And then, uh, somewhere along the line, we lost our government to corporations. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it was that decision that made corporate corporations the same as a person. That was some of the, some of the worst legislation that ever came down. Um, because then they could not be sued. You know, I mean, their, their whole a corporation's whole agenda is different than an individual person. So that was never something that was really going to be a good thing. Right. So we have uh, first the people, then the next layer of control is the government, governments, 
then because our governments have been co-opted by corporations, then the next layer of control is corporate control. Mm -hmm. And because the, the corporations are usually backed by these uh, families like the Rothschilds and the Bilderbergers and so on and so forth, um, then we have these Illuminati or these elites, these old ruling families that are the next level of control uh, behind corporations. Mm -hmm. And then behind the Illuminati, I suspect are extra dimensionals, uh, such as the archons that I talked about in my, in my talk. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, a lot of people talk about the archons. And for our listeners, I'm sure they're familiar with them. But if you want to give a brief summary of them, that would be great. Yeah. Um, archons are these kind of extra dimensional parasites that um, they have kind of a web of energy around the earth. And the way I have come to understand it is you don't really incarnate on earth without getting uh, archonic implants. And uh, they're not like, uh, you know, they're not like a physical implant like the military might put in you or anything else like that. They almost, uh, they almost look kind of organic, you know, like a wad of goo or blob mm -hmm. that um, then shoots out tentacles to wrap around other areas inside the body. <clears throat> and mostly it's about control and for, you know, people that don't have a strong uh, personality or, or mental strength, then they can be very susceptible to, to uh, negative suggestion by by these archonic implants. Mm -hmm. So if someone is um, heavily smoking cigarettes or drinking lots of alcohol, <clears throat> then they become more susceptible to being influenced by these archons. And then the archons really will step up their influence if they're if they're uh, if they have a hold of somebody who's important, who's important in government, who's important in corporations, or somebody who's really high up, mm -hmm. they really want control of those people because then they have the chance to make all kinds of people miserable underneath. And that's really what they do. They feed off the energy of human suffering. And so when we look at the world and we look at what our politicians are doing, mm -hmm. and we look at what the church is doing with the pedophilia and, and things like that, it looks insane to those of us that have a normal human spectrum of emotion mm -hmm. and who still have control of our faculties. But the, but these people are under the influence of something that doesn't care whether humanity survives or not. It's really just here to create suffering and milk that suffering until we're milked dry and then move on. Mm -hmm. And, and so if it looks like it's insane and it has no rhyme or reason, a lot of the time, I think that that's true because I look at what's being done to our environment. We and we all depend on our environment to survive on this planet. Mm -hmm. We depend on our ecosystem working in a particular way. We're losing all our pollinators. We're losing uh, the bees are dying off and things like this. This is really going to cause an environmental collapse mm -hmm. uh, when all these things keep going. And these people that are in government, they should know this. These people are not stupid. They went to college at Harvard and Yale and these Ivy League schools, and they're not dumb people, but yet they're making terrible decisions. Mm -hmm. They're making extremely self-centered decisions. Why? This is what caused me to look deeper and to try to figure out what is the underlying thing that is causing this insane, reckless, destructive behavior, mm -hmm. and why does it proliferate? in the form of narcissism, me, 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 mm -hmm. and why is it so maniacal and extreme? And it's getting more extreme all the time. I agree. And, and, and people are being, uh, in, you know, slowly incul uh, indoctrinated to being more extreme and accepting more extreme behavior. It's like the Hunger Games. I watched that, and I was horrified. And I was thinking, you know, 15, 20 years ago, that if that movie had come out, there would have been a huge outcry against it because children killing children. But yet the, the intensity has turned up over the years to the point they come out with a movie like that now and people accept it. Right. Yeah, they're calibrating them. And you have to ask, what are they calibrating these people for? Why are they conditioning them to such violence and to such abuse and evil? Right. Are they preparing them to fight a war or are they trying to use them as something else? What, do you, what is your take? Well, they could, it could be all of that, but um, to me, the most obvious reason 
is again to uh, keep serving up daily fear porn uh, to keep people uh, afraid and contracted in their body Mm -hmm. so that they can't really expand their consciousness. When you're afraid and not breathing deeply and uh, your adrenals start to become exhausted, um, you are not going to be thinking about enlightenment. You're not going to be thinking about you know, relaxing and and expanding love in the world. You're just going to be thinking about how can I protect myself. Mm-hmm. I so agree with you on that one. Yeah, the aura contracts without a doubt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, and, you know, there is no reward for these guys either. I mean, they are making irrational decisions. They're not thinking about anything they're doing. And this planet is suffering. And, and th- what is the reward for them unless they think they can just hitch a ride with the Black Space Program? Well, I don't know. I guess a lot of them, maybe, maybe a lot of them have been promised a ride in the Black project space program Mm -hmm. but i have a feeling that it's an empty promise Mm -hmm. i think that uh, the people at the very top they're going to go and they're going to leave their minions to stew in their juice i agree yep i think they've been deceived and they've been had and they don't even realize it yep yeah and and of course we need to turn all this around and so far just for the sake of the planet alone i mean we need to turn the direction of this course around and a lot of people will say well maybe this is the way it's supposed to be i don't buy that at all not at all so I either I don't think this is a natural ascension process for this world. And I don't think this is natural for people, you know, and from what I've experienced with people with mind control, it's all about, you're right. It's directing consciousness. It's, it's controlling their thoughts and manipulating them into doing things they would normally never do. And, yeah. and that's just plain wrong. And, you know, it's one thing to make your own decisions with your own life. It's another thing to have people, you know, entrain your mind and your brain with, with psychotronic weapons to get you to do things and then blame it on somebody else. That's, Oh, oh, don't get me started. But yeah, yeah, that's that's the beast that needs to be disabled. That's the tentacles yeah. that need to be cut off. Well, we just we just need to keep uh, chipping away at it and drag it out into the light. And I don't think it'll survive in the light very long. Mm-mm. No, I don't think so either. It, and- it thrives on secrecy. And the more whistleblowers that come out and the more we end the secrecy. And it's a pe- people's movement of disclosure on so many levels now, not just the UFO thing. Mm-hmm. And the more we expose it, the more we drag this thing into the light, you know, this thing that's been hiding in secret, um, the, 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 less it's, the less chance it has of surviving the light of day. Mm-hmm. Because once people see what it, it really is, they're going to want to take it out. Mm-hmm. I agree. Well, you know, in the transparency thing, you know, everybody, it is transparent. It is very clear to me what's going on in this world and, and the decisions being made in office and everything else. I mean, so I guess to some degree it is clear and we are seeing what's happening. We are seeing the design. We're seeing the agenda. And it's just about, you know, changing that timeline and altering things so that this this, this self-destruct thing doesn't continue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but I think you're right about that. You know, once you see the ugliness of these programs, you know, being exotic technology isn't so pretty when they're misusing it. Right. The bottom yeah. line. Mm-hmm. So, and, and do you have memories now? Do you dream normally or, or do you have flashbacks or anything like that pertaining to your, your screen memories or, or anything? Um, well, I do have, I have had some flashbacks, you know, like the one I mentioned. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, uh yeah, I'm not not uh, not too much. That's you know, good. Just, um, okay, so you're not really being haunted by any any type of residual programming. Well, yeah, I would say I'm probably still haunted. I guess the thing that the sad thing, and you know, I don't, I try not to whine too much, you know, because I don't believe in it. Mm-hmm. But sometimes it's just sobering to sit back and think that your whole adult life has been de- spent dealing with this, pretty much. Mm-hmm. And it has interfered with being a good mom. It's interfered with being uh, with my life, with my livelihood. You know, it's just, you know, it's just had a, a grip on my whole adult life. Mm-hmm. I and uh, it's. Uh, it takes away, basically. And, and you're right. You can't get those moments back. No. You know, I mean, even for me, I mean, my induction took place in 2004. And I mean, I can't get my life back anymore. I recover as best I can. But those days, those years are gone. They were taken from me. And that is wrong. And I'm just speaking and I'm not whining either. But I'll tell you what, once you start looking back, and you start reflecting on what happens, and how how people deliberately go out of their way to sabotage using these type of weapon systems, it's inexcusable. Mm-hmm. You know, and it should be a no brainer for anybody in, in high government areas or high, any high corporation anywhere to take these things down. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and the only reason they wouldn't is because it's their agenda or they're trying, they're, they want to control, manipulate the masses and this technology works, which it does. Yeah. 
you know, so that's the sad part of it. But, um, but you know what, we're, we're stronger for it on so many different levels. And, um, you know, I have a lot of respect for you. I know, I know you're a powerful being and multidimensional and you're that warrior spirit we all love. So, yeah, well, I think you are too, because yep. you know, I watched, I watched your video with my friend the other night and, uh, it's, that was a very powerful video. Well, thank you. I yeah, really what, feel uh, for you. You had to go through that. It's horrible. You know, what's really interesting is what that which does not kill us makes us stronger. But boy, does it piss us off. At least it pissed me off um, <laughs> beyond the word. And I'm in control. I mean, I'm not the type to go, you know, crazy. But I'll tell you what, man, I was livid. You know, when you start looking back, you start reflecting on all that was taken and, and all the type of things that they do, especially with artificial intelligence and how it can destroy the brain and, the, and screws with the neuron activity. And, you know, these people that are mad scientists and these these transhumanist, you know, scumbags, they, don't, they have not been test pilots for the technology. And that's what pisses right. me off the most. I mean, they're, they're basically using um, civilians to test their or people who are enhanced psychically to be tested with these programs, which work, of course, because we're yeah. naturally psychic to begin with and telepathic. So, of course, uh -huh. it's going to work. But when you think about it, why aren't these guys putting their butts on the line? Why aren't they being interfaced with their own little beast? It's my yeah. real problem with these guys. You know, it's kind of like, you know what? I don't like being the guinea pig for them. No. So, and I and mean, if, I can go ahead. If if the National Security Act of 1947 was signed into law to protect national security of the United States of America and the people of the United States of America. Since when did we sign up to be guinea pigs for whatever freaking kind of technology that they want to experiment with? Mm -hmm. Exactly. I don't, know, I don't recall signing up. The public. That's victimizing the public that you're supposed to be protecting. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It is. And you have to ask, you know, what, what was the, the mad scientist behind that scene? Because there's always somebody behind the curtain and uh, yeah. we are drawing that curtain and we are going to expose every single one of these little rats. And, uh, you know, I'm sorry, but I, I'm done. I'm done. I'm not going to play the victim here on this world. And, and that's one of the things um, we don't do. I mean, you know, we might've experienced some horrific programming, but I'll tell you what, we've gotten through these things, but yet they are held accountable for the years lost, for the torturous avenues, for the abuse. And I speak for many people, not just myself, for all yeah. those moments that were stolen from us while some piece of crap gets rich behind the scenes is inexcusable. And I hope Absolutely. people wake the hell up because this is not a game. This is a technological assault program. Yeah. So don't get me started on that because I can get fired up too. I'm yeah. forced to be reckoned with sometimes. <laughs> me both. You and me both. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's just uh, really incredible. But you know, I, I know you touched briefly on the film industry at the Super Soldier Summit, Mind Control Summit, and I want to know what your what your take is on the film industry today. And do you think they are deliberately deploying tactics for mind control? Um, yeah, I think I think it's kind of a mixed bag in Hollywood. I think uh, some really good stuff gets out, like Avatar and the Matrix films. And uh, let's see, what was another one that was good? Um, the 13th Floor, uh, kind of the story wasn't all that great, but uh, some of the uh, things that they put in that film were really good. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so there's some, some good things that leak out. I believe there's an awful lot of truth that is leaked out in films. And as I understand it, that's the Illuminati putting in front of us what they want to do. And then if we don't raise hell and about the movie, then they consider that we, they have their, we have, they have our permission mm -hmm. to do what they want. So um, I do think that a lot of material is leaked out into movies and films. Um, and I do think that some films are strictly uh, mind control. Um, they either are priming people to be mind controlled or there, is mi there are mind control messages in the film. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the flicker, the flicker rate of uh, when a film is playing, the flicker rate in the screen is very hypnotic. So they could be having all kinds of things in there subliminally uh, to be programming people. Mm hmm. Yeah, I agree with you on that one, too. And, of course, I suspect there are triggers encoded in the films um, so that if somebody is programmed and they go see a film, they're going to walk out getting triggered. Right. Mm -hmm. So I mean, and that, of course, is all part of these nice little mind control programs that they do. And, you know, I look at all these different divisions and I'm trying to um, assess which one is really the most guilty when it comes down to mind control. We all know that the CIA is notorious for early days of, of uh, you know, the early MK Ultra programming. Which, which division do you think is really um, the one that's really pushing for the mind control the worst? Well, I don't know. I think I would still probably say the 
the uh, CIA, but I'm sure the NSA has been involved too. Mm -hmm. And they, they've been kind of hiding in the shadows behind the FBI and the CIA for a lot of years, but now they're kind of out there. Mm -hmm. uh, they're really being scrutinized. So um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if, if they were not behind some of the CIA mind control stuff. Yeah. Because they're all yeah, deeper I, layer, a deeper layer. Right. Yeah. Well, they're data mining. So that makes sense. Yes. All right. With that being said, we're going to be heading for a break. We'll be right back, everybody. Stay tuned. Raven Star Switching Hour. 